Not every one of these knives that you're going to find in these retailers is actually actually going to be tactical. Like, you're not going to use it to go out and fight a war with. But the modern everyday carry folder includes all of those um, characteristics. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hi, I'm Bob DeMarco, the Knife Junkie. And I'm Jim Person, the Knife Newbie. And we're here at the Knife Junkie Podcast to just talk about knives. And let's jump right into it. Jim, what do you got in your pocket today? Well, you know, Bob, same old thing I had in my pocket last episode. I've got my Swiss Army knife, you know, the multi-purpose knife. It's still here. I haven't bought a new one yet, but... uh You'll probably be hearing that for a while. Yeah, well, I might have to force the issue. This is a venerable, venerable item, the Victorinox yeah, yeah. Tinker. And and I, before folks hear what you're going to talk about today, I just want to know, how many pockets do you have in these pants? These are all standard 12-pocket <laughs> knife pants. Okay. <laughs> Uh, today, I'm, I'm only carrying three knives today, my usual three. Uh, my, as always, my pink cold steel broken skull with the snaggle tooth in the waistband. And then uh, for my left pocket carry today, I have this uh, beautiful Benchmade proper, a lovely modern slip joint. And then in my right hand pocket, uh, something that's been hard to kick out of my pocket lately, the, the Emerson Sacks. And this one is wearing the new Emerson Lowrider Deep Carry Pocket Clip, uh, which I will be reviewing later on this show. Actually. Oh, okay. All right. Well, speaking about, uh, coming up, we've got the review. We've got, uh, our couple of segments in the show, uh, one of which is Knife Life News. And we also have our tip of the week segment coming up later today. And all that's on the Knife Junkie podcast. Before we get into this week's show, here's the Knife Junkie with this week's Knife Life News. Recently, I made a long overdue discovery. Emerson Knife Incorporated has created a lowrider deep carry pocket clip. A lowrider pocket clip, those, that's their terminology, not mine, I would call it deep carry, has been needed from Emerson Knives for a long time. Sublime knife designs like the PSARC, the CQC-13, and now the SAX are blighted by audaciously high-riding pocket clips, which leave a conspicuous amount of killing tool above your pocket line. And if you're wearing khakis with their slanted pockets, forget the PSARC and most other Emersons altogether. Until now. The Emerson Knife Lowrider Pocket Clip is a handsome and welcome addition to the company's product line, and I would call it a good first attempt. The exaggerated hourglass shape, though at first aesthetically off-putting, has great contouring for drawing the knife. So in this case, utility wins over aesthetics. And here's where attention to aesthetics negatively impacts function. The end of the clip is sharpened to a downward or scaleward beak or talon. And when it's in the pocket, it has a propensity to grab, snag, and gouge the flesh, especially between my palm and my wrist, where my hand naturally brushes past the pocket clip in everyday walking. But the most damning design flaw of the Emerson Lowrider pocket clip is the lateral thinness of the portion at the top of the clip that loops over. Here was an opportunity to create an amazing deep carry clip just as stout, just as beautiful as the standard Emerson clip, but with a laterally stout loop over portion, and that opportunity was missed, unfortunately. Recently, I drew my sacks from my pocket, which has been wearing the deep rider, uh, low rider pocket clip, and found that the clip was bent all the way to the bottom edge of the scale. I easily bent it back with my hand and pushed it down with my thumb to create tension. Now, my concern is that I did something during the day to grossly deform the pocket clip, but it didn't require enough force to, to alert me, to make me notice. I didn't feel that force on my pants. So that, to me, hammered home what I suspected. The uh, pocket clip is too thin and cannot handle the pressures of everyday carry. So it is a first good attempt. I cannot wait to see the second attempt. In conclusion, for $25 a piece, I would say that Emerson still has some research and development to do on this clip, and I can't wait to check out the Lowrider Clip Mark II. But thanks to Emerson for bringing this much-needed and welcome product to market. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, Jim, today I wanted to talk about the modern tactical folder because in recent years, that has really been the entree for most people into the knife world, into knife collecting, into the interest of knives. Because uh, you go to most stores, you go to Dick's Sporting Goods 
or you go to Walmart or one of these places, and you'll find Swiss Army knives, like the one you're rocking. That's right, that's right. And then you will find a small selection of Kershaws and Bucks and Gerbers and um, occasionally Spydercos, and they are all in this modern tactical folder format. And what that means is one-handed opening and closing, has a clip, pocket clip, so that it can stay uh, fastened okay. to your pocket, and locking mechanism. It has to have a locking mechanism. Okay. So the, so when we're talking about a modern tactical folder, mm-hmm. that's I'm going to do my air quotes here. Yeah. That's the definition, the, those three components. Yeah. One-handed opening and closing, a pocket clip, and uh, a lock. So here's the thing. Not every one of these knives that you're going to find in these retailers is actually actually going to be tactical. Like, you're not going to use it to go out and fight a war with. But the modern everyday carry folder includes all of those um, characteristics. Hmm. Okay. So Clear as mud, Jim? Clear as mud. I, I, I understand the folder. Now okay. That's where we're talking about different <laughs> types of knives. Yeah. Folding knife is means exactly what it is. It folds yeah. back in as yeah. opposed to a uh, blade that's always there, like a, yeah. what's called a fixed blade. I, I think. Yeah, fixed blade okay. is is a knife okay. where the blade does not fold. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Jim. So, so why why are they calling a modern tactical then? Okay, uh, that's kind of what I'm calling it, and it's kind of the parlance. But it's it's um, the modern aspect mm. is the one handed opening and closing. And the pocket clip. Okay, so when you're saying one-handed open, that means I can open it without having to use both hands. Yeah, it's look, got like a, a button or a flip or a Some of them or, have a button. Okay. Many of them have this thing right here. This is called a, a thumb stud. Okay. And you just use your thumb to sweep uh, okay. it open. Okay. Or you can just flick it with your thumb like that. Gotcha. Okay. And then by using, this is a, this is a bench made, by using this axis lock with one hand, it can retract back into the, into oh, okay. the pocket. Okay. Same so, thing with this knife. So I've always, you know, growing up, I always heard the term switchblade. Is, yeah. is that kind of the same that we're talking about? Kind of. A, a switchblade is an automatic knife. So you, you press a button and a spring actuates the blade. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, these others are just manufactured and, and finely tuned to where there there is tension on the blade from a little detent ball inside. And when you break that tension, it's enough to get it to flip open. Oh, uh, okay. They're pretty... uh pretty well manufactured, but this is a switchblade. This is a ProTech, and it's got a button right there. Mm-hmm. And when you press that button, it releases a spring. Uh, okay. It uncoils a spring, which right. releases this blade. And we'll uh, we'll try to have uh, some pictures of these knives in our uh, blog post that accompanies this, uh, this show episode so folks can see some of these knives, because even though Bob only had three in his pocket, he's got... <laughs> Like eight or ten here on the on the table in front of us as we're as we're going through and kind of talking about the the, the modern tactical folder. So, so the modern tactical folder, Jim. I, I need to be clear here yeah. is really the thing that um, has been when it came onto the scene with Spyderco and with Cold Steel early you know, in the in the nineties and such and the, the late eighties. It created um, a new whole new paradigm for for knives. If you're working. The the very first one-handed opening and closing knife was called the Workman by Spider Co. Hmm. And the whole idea is, say you're up on a ladder and you're holding something above your head and you need your knife to cut something above your head. You need two hands to open your knife. You're screwed. Right. So you pull this Spider Co. Workman out of your pocket. You put your thumb in the little hole on the blade and you swing it out. You cut whatever you're cutting and then you close it with right. the uh, locking mechanism. Right. Put it back in your pocket. All right. So this design that we're talking about here, and we're, we're calling it modern tactical folder, really came out of a utilitarian need, kind of a, a purpose need, if you will. Yes and no, Jim. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> simultaneously to the, to the advent of the, of the, um, of the Spider Co. workmen, Ernest Emerson and other people, uh, like Lynn Thompson of Cold Steel Knives, they were working on turning combat knives into folders also. And, mm. and so some of the, some of the hallmarks of, that we're seeing in the workmen were coming out in the earlier tactical Tactical folders, okay. knives made for Navy SEALs initially, okay. that turned out to have innovations that would carry on through the through the years. Okay, you dropped some names of, of knife companies, knife makers. Are those, those some of the major ones that we're going to be hearing about in this podcast in future episodes? Yes, yes. Uh, Ernest Emerson, you'll hear a lot about just because I think he's awesome. I love his designs, and he trained in the same martial art I trained in, and uh, I just love his work. I always have. Uh, Lynn Thompson, who's the a much maligned chairman of uh, and and founder of Cold Steel Knives, who does these incredible videos where he tests his knives out on pigs and well, you know they're dead, but you know he has uh, they're pretty graphic, you know. Mm. You want to you want to chop the hand off a man? Check out what this can do <laughs> to a pig, you know. 
And a lot of people kind of, you know, diss him for that. But he creates, he's got a collection of historical knives, and he creates modern tactical folders and other kind of knives from the style cues he gets from his old knife collection, okay. which I think is cool. Right. So different knife makers, different companies, different styles, but are these modern tactical folders that we're kind of talking about, again, we, we you kind of hit on earlier, they all have three essentials to be in this category, but do they all work slightly different? In, in other words, is that the reason that an Emerson may be different than a Spider Co. and they have different mm. features or different ways that they yeah. do their, their thing? Most certainly. All of these tactical knives could be um, used for cutting boxes, for instance, or opening mail. Here's a Microtech, here's a Benchmade, here's a Crifts Reeve Knives, here's a Riot, there's a ZT, there's a Protech. They all share these characteristics of the pocket clip, the one hand opening and closing, and the locking, and the locking mechanism. Learning. But they all achieve those in different ways. Mm -hmm. This company, the, the designer of this knife, Chris Reeve, he invented this whole system of locking where this part of the frame is cut out and bent so that when you open it, the frame comes in and interrupts the tang of the blade and doesn't allow it to close. That's called a frame lock, and it's ubiquitous now. So many knives use that mechanism. A guy named Michael Walker invented this. This is called the, the liner lock, where you take just the liner, which is a interior structural element of the handle, and you bend it so that when the knife, when the blade is extended, the liner flips out, interrupts the tang, and doesn't allow it to close. So there are many different, so those two are very similar. This is an axis lock created by Benchmade. It operates a totally different way. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. And then Cold Steel took the ordinary back lock, which you find on the Buck 110, and put a little pin right there where the blade meets the leaf spring. Mm -hmm. And that takes all of the tension off of the, uh, takes all of the um, impact forces from the blade and distributes them through the frame and not to the lock. So this makes this an extremely strong frame. So yes, they're all doing the same thing, but they're doing it in different ways. Okay. And that's the reason, as a knife junkie, you need to collect all of them. Yes, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> is it, but is there a favorite of those functions or styles, if you will, that you personally have? I personally am probably like most people out there right now. I'm a sucker for the titanium frame lock folders, these flippers like this. Mm. So you, you have this extension of the tang. It, it, it's a flipper. It actuates the blade, and then it acts as a, a guard, so your finger doesn't run up onto the blade if you're, oh, okay. if you're thrusting. And it's made from titanium, It's which is a beautiful material. It's very light, and it just has an appeal that is, um, you know, you can't quite put into words. That's right. the whole point, right. I guess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else we need to know about our, our subject for the day, modern well, tactical folders, if you will? I, I guess the important thing to stress is that when I'm talking about modern tactical folders, I'm really talking about just modern folders with those characteristics. Okay. The tactical part might be misleading in that in that not every knife that has those characteristics, as a matter of fact, most are not intended to kill people. They're intended to open boxes. Okay. Uh, but of course, all can be pressed in that direction. Okay. So recap again for me and for our listeners, if you don't mind, the the three characteristics that you're that you're saying are in this. All right, and you'll help you'll category. help me remember. <laughs> I remember the one locking uh, mechanism. Okay, it's got to have a locking mechanism to keep the blade open. It's got to have one handed opening and closing. And it has to have a pocket clip to keep it secured to your person. Okay. And again, we'll try to have some uh, some pictures of some of these knives. I know it's difficult to kind of see the knife as we're as we're talking about it here on the podcast, but we'll have some uh, pictures in the blog post that accompanies uh, this show, which will be uh, show number one here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And uh, so we hope you uh, check out the blog at theknifejunkie.com to learn some more about that. And Jim, before we end this this discussion about modern tactical folders, I wanted to show you this one. It's very special. To me. Holy cow. That is called a Cold Steel Espada Extra Large. Yes, and, it is, folks. This and is, what is this thing? That's 14, a, 16 inches? It's got a seven and a half inch blade, which is barely adequate for my purposes. <laughs> and uh, oh, about wow. a nine and a half inch handle. Wow. Isn't she a honey? She's big. <laughs> Well, that I understand why that was not in your pocket check. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. would not fit in the pocket. It was in right to the big house. But that, that was in the, in the backpack of knives that accompanied Bob today. <laughs> uh, wrapping up, uh, anything else you want to add? No, Jim, except uh, we got to take a look at some other knives, fixed blade knives in the future. We got to take a look at uh, just just so we have a baseline vocabulary. Mm. When I say modern folder, we know what we're talking about. When I say slip joint, we know what we're talking about. Gotcha. Yeah, because as the knife newbie. 
These are all new terms yep. to me. I'm trying to learn these things. Yep. So when we're talking about this, maybe a, a modern folding knife, you know, uh, again, locking mechanism, one hand open and closing and one closing and, and a pocket clip and a pocket clip. OK, good discussion. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> oh, you got it, Jim. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now it's time for this week's tip of the week. In the waistband carry for discreet, comfortable carry. So very similar to the concept of in the waistband carry for pistols, you are carrying your knife in your pants, between the waistband of your pants and your body. So what you do is you take the an ordinary tactical folder with the clip on it, and instead of putting it in your pocket, you put it right over the lip of your pants. So this allows you to carry larger knives and keep them out of sight, and, and also from banging around in your pockets if that's a thing that bothers you. So I used to carry around a 6-inch cold steel Vaquero Grande, which is a big, giant knife. I use it now for cutting down large, tall grass in my backyard. It's huge. And I used to carry it around in nerfed-up New York City, where you're not allowed to carry a knife at all. And, uh, you know, I did this when I was indestructible in the early 2000s. I'm no longer indestructible. But I used to carry it in the appendix uh, carry right up here in this fold between my upper thigh and my uh, my stomach. And uh, when I sat down, this big giant knife fit there nicely. When I stood up, no one knew I was carrying around a virtual machete. So I was doing that for a while just to conceal something I wasn't supposed to be carrying. And let me just say right now, know your your local knife laws. This could all be totally illegal where you're from. So just be aware of that. Uh, but here's a little anecdote to sort of hammer home why in the waistband carry could be important, depending on your location. So a few years ago, I was at my daughter's spring concert at her school. And, uh, you know, if you've ever been to one of these concerts, you have to watch everybody else's kid go before your kid. And it's it can be quite excruciating, let me just say that. Anyway, there was another audience member across the uh, the aisle from me who felt the same way. He was an older guy who had uh, uh, who had high tension cables for forearms. This guy looks like like he'd been around the block a little bit, but he was uh, he you know he was buttoned up and and nice looking. But he leaned over across the aisle and he said to me, "I see both of your knives." And I said, "Excuse me." And at the time, my my mo was to carry a large uh, tactical folder in my front right pocket and a smaller three inch EDC folder in my rear left pocket, and both clips showing proudly. And this guy said, uh, he whispered all this to me in the middle of a concert, but basically he said, when I used to work in Southeast Asia, uh, I'd seen many people get their pocket knives taken, and then they'd get shanked, or th- it would be run off with, and they would never get the the pocket knife back. But uh, he said, unless you're extremely tough, which he probably could tell by looking at me, I wasn't, you are not going to be able to survive if someone comes up on you and grabs at both of those knives. So I suggest you put one in your waistband. But in any case, uh, now I carry one exposed clip knife, my front right pocket, and then my pink cold steel broken skull with the waveable snaggle tooth edition in my uh, in my waistband. That way, if I ever find myself on the ground getting kicked by a crowd of people, maybe I can wave it out and start cutting ankles. It also helps keep my pants up. All right, Bob, uh, another great segment there with the, the tip of the week and, of course, our, our earlier information with the Knife Life, Knife Life News, if I can say it, uh, in addition to some good education from me and hopefully uh, uh, kind of stuff folks already knew if they were uh, knife collectors and, and knife junkies with our discussion on the modern tactical folder. But but uh, some good information and I think a good show number one on the Knife Junkie well, podcast. I hope so. Yeah, hopefully folks are uh, learning something today. Jim? There's always something to learn about knives. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a question or comment or uh, maybe you have a difference of opinion about something that the Knife Junkie had to oh, say. Oh, I'm expecting that yeah. for sure. Uh, please give uh, the Knife Junkie a call. Our 24-7 listener line is 724-466-4487. Again, that's 724-466-4487. It's difficult to uh, connect with uh, the Knife Junkie uh, live all the time, so that's the reason we've got the answering uh, device set up. So please do uh, uh, leave your name if you have a, a YouTube channel that you review knives, please leave that uh, address or whatever, leave your comment or question, and uh, we'll uh, try to answer it on an upcoming episode. And I just would like to say one thing, I am very open to debate and to, you know, people uh, having a difference of opinion with Mm -hmm. me. I do want to hear that stuff. And if it's politely put, and it's a good point, we'll talk about it and we'll, we'll bring it up. 
And who knows? We'll maybe even make a call to you. Right. Well, and also don't forget the Knife Junkie is on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And you check those comments and uh, hopefully I can uh, engage with other uh, knife enthusiasts there on the YouTube channel and get some commentary and discussion going back and forth. And uh, if you are not subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, please do so. We're getting close to the uh, thousand subscriber mark. So that'll be a a big celebration coming up for us. And we may have some some news to announce about what we're going to do for that 1,000. Uh, subscriber, uh, kind of a uh, maybe some giveaways coming up yeah. in the future. Just make sure your passport is up to date. Ah, mine is. <laughs> <laughs> Theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Now find our main website at thenifejunkie.com. Bob, closing words from The Knife Junkie. Hey, Jim, keep your knives sharp and remember, check your local life laws before you wear it in the waistband. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.